Hello, this is Zahir Alam. Welcome you all on Frankly Speak. Our guest today is Mr. Martin Trust, a top international apparel industry investor from the United States. Mr. Trust is the founder of Brandart International Limited, a leading U.S. investment firm that specializes in creating joint venture partnerships with apparel and textile companies around the world. Trust began his stellar career in the apparel and textile industry in 1958. Branded was founded in 2001 by Mr. Trust, and Branded invests primarily in South Asia and the Far East. Recently, Branded International from U.S., Hong Kong-based manufacturer TNS Buttons, and Dhaka-based Onunto Group, a tribe of investors are setting up Bangladesh's first metal button and rivets factory to supply the country's $14 billion garment export. They're all joining forces to build a factory which will make accessories mainly for denim producers. We welcome Mr. Martin Trust on Frankly Speaking. Thank you. We are very del delighted to have you here on our show today. My pleasure. Uh, first of all, we would like to know about the uh, situation in RMG sector in Bangladesh. How do you see the situation in Bangladesh? Well, the apparel sector, uh, frankly, is uh, growing rather rapidly. Hmm. and. Uh, it appears to us that uh, there's a still good deal of growth left uh, because uh, there is the whole value chain uh, that you can uh, uh, go up in uh, in terms of the kind of customers that you uh, currently uh, are selling. Uh, if you recall back uh, when uh, the Bangladesh industry in apparel was first getting started, it mainly supplied to the mass markets, whether they be in Europe or United States or wherever. <clears throat> but uh, in addition to the mass market, there is the moderate market and then there's the premium market. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've had um, experience selling to all three. And uh, in general, it, we've uh, moved from typically the mass market to the... To the premium. Well, to the uh, moderate, and we have a little bit going in the premium, but mostly okay. it's to the moderate, moderate. market. Okay. And part of that has to do with the uh, with the customers themselves. Uh, if you follow the history of our industry, the mass market has generally been the first to move on from one country to another country in search of uh, lower wages, uh, you know, more advantage of uh, purchasing, and uh, that uh, has left room for the moderate market and the premium market to take advantage of the capacity that uh, was left behind. What is your observation uh, in terms of, uh, I mean, the apparel and textile sector? Uh, is Bangladesh uh, gaining or losing grounds in the global market like the U.S. or European Union markets? Right now? My sense is, uh, with respect to uh, the European, clearly they're, uh, they're gaining. Uh, first of all, by having uh, GSP Plus available, uh, they gain position. And now we understand that it's possible that uh, the GSP Plus will be granted even if the fabric doesn't come from uh, Bangladesh. So they'll permit fabric from other countries uh, to be uh, cut and sewn in this country and still enjoy uh, GSP Plus advantages to Europe. In what the, about the United States? In the U.S., uh, they have good relations with uh, a number of, uh, of uh, progressive retailers. And um, they're gaining, I think, again, in terms of uh, developing relationships, not just at the mass market level, but also at the higher value add level. And I think that uh, they, uh, while they have no, we, the United States has not granted any special duty privileges the way the Europeans have, uh, still the uh, products coming out of Bangladesh are very competitive. Uh, three years ago, you teamed up with a Sri Lankan uh, company uh, that was Sri Lanka's Brandix Lanka three years ago. And possibly this is for the first time or second time you're going to have uh, joint venture uh, initiatives in Bangladesh. What, what is going to, going to happen? We have two programs, uh, two, two projects that we're uh, putting into place in, in Bangladesh. The first is the one uh, that you mentioned, which is the uh, button company, Brandix Metal Buttons. Lanka. Yeah. And that's uh, TNS from... Uh, 
from Hong Kong, which is a, who is our partner. We've been partners with TNS for more than a dozen years, uh, and we've had a joint venture with them in Sri Lanka. Uh, the second project that we have is a uh, is a sweater factory, mm -hmm. uh, which we are again putting into uh, the uh, free zone in, um, in 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 Dhaka, and there. Our uh, model is again the same. We, we, we have three partners. There's our local partner, who is Ananta. There's our technical partner, which is a company called Washong out of Shanghai. Mm -hmm. And the third partner is Brandot. Okay. And that will be uh, a, a project that uh, we'll probably start building the factory in about three months. Uh, we have already got the land and we mm -hmm. fill the land. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. So now we're getting ready to. Uh, start making the details for how we progress with uh, the securing of the equipment and the uh, and the securing of the building. When do you expect it will be operational? The uh, button factory probably operational around June next of year. next year. The uh, sweater factory perhaps uh, four months later. Okay, okay. But uh, would you share uh, with us, uh, what, what are the factors, what are the reasons made you interested in having or entering into this market and have forging joint venture with the local partners? Well, in the case of the button uh, factory, uh, we know that there's a very large amount of uh, denim produced in Bangladesh. Uh, and uh, most denim requires some metal, metal snaps, metal buttons, metal rivets, whatever. Uh, much of that is imported today, the, the majority of it is imported today, and we felt that uh, there's an opportunity for a domestic company based here in Bangladesh uh, to capture a, a, a portion of the market. Okay, so uh, tell us something about the, I mean, the market opportunities in the apparel and textile sector in Bangladesh. I think there are a large number of, uh, of possibilities. Uh, there is... Uh, a lot of sportswear already uh, being made here, a lot of trousers, a lot of shirts, a lot of t-shirts, both knitted and woven. And uh, so there's uh, that whole uh, uh, gamut of, uh, of those kind of textile products that are uh, available and will continue, in my opinion, to develop in, in, Bang in Bangladesh. The portion that is uh, one that we're involved in that is not as as developed is intimate apparel. It's a big part of, of our joint venture network. Uh, currently, our network consists of 15 factories, not counting the two that will go into uh, Bangladesh, and we're in nine countries. And a large percentage mm -hmm. of what we make is intimate apparel. And uh, so that area, while it's it, there is some being made currently, uh, I don't want to uh, intimate that there's none being made, but... Uh, it's not as big a, a percentage of what you're exporting as is sportswear. So there's certainly an opportunity there, and there's an opportunity in a lot of other uh, related uh, products related to, um, to sportswear that Bangladesh can still develop into. Uh, part of it is the developing of more sophisticated uh, designs, more fashion-forward product, uh, and that will come with time. Uh, there are many, many really bright entrepreneurs we find in in Bangladesh who clearly can understand how to enter that market if they choose to. Very briefly, uh, how do you see the overall investment climate here in Bangladesh for the foreign investors? It's um, okay. Uh, it, it's not perfect, but it's okay. okay. Uh, and when I say not perfect, you have a shortage of energy here. So uh, one has to be uh, concerned about... Uh, certain aspects of the apparel textile industry that are heavy users of energy. Uh, you have gas as, as natural gas as your primary source, and, uh, and that may or may not be available everywhere or in the quantities that people will need. So from that standpoint, uh, one has to be careful that they enter into a, a situation where uh, they can maintain, even in the spite of this, of this uh, issue of uh, getting sufficient energy uh, products into into their into their countries into their companies. So I think that uh, from that standpoint, uh, you can say that's a, a minor negative. On the positive side, you have some very very good entrepreneurs who are uh, knowledgeable of uh, international trade 
and in my view, uh, have all the expertise they need to uh, develop uh, very robust businesses in the apparel and textile industries. Mr. Martin, we'll continue with more issues, with some more issues, but before that, we need to take a short break. Dear viewers, we're going for a short break. We'll be back right after the commercial. Stay with us. Don't go away. Our guest is Mr. Martin Trust. Dear viewers, welcome back. You're watching Frankly Speaking. Our guest is Mr. Martin Trust, founder of Branded International. Uh, how do you see Bangladesh competing with the countries like uh, China, Vietnam, or Sri Lanka, or India, or Pakistan? I think uh, with respect to uh, China, which is, after all, the biggest exporter in the world today yeah. of apparel, uh, I think uh, Bangladesh uh, is uh, in, good, in, in good standing in terms of being able to be competitive. Uh, China has its own set of problems. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, uh, there are indications that uh, uh, more of China's production may be aimed at the domestic market because there is a need to uh, satisfy the growing middle class, which, uh, you know, enlarges every year in China. So there's a tendency to uh, think that uh, exports may become, while still important, may become not the only outlet for entrepreneurs in, in, in China. Uh, we have a, a couple of operations in, uh, in China, and it's, we're finding it somewhat difficult to get labor, for example, uh, in, particularly in the coastal, uh, coastal areas mm -hmm. uh, of China. So uh, here your labor is, frankly, uh, quite available. Okay. Uh, now, when you compare it to India, it's a different story. India is a strong cotton country, uh, not very good in synthetics, not, hasn't developed a lot of synthetics, but uh, cotton they're good at. Labor is quite available. We have a very large project in Vaisak Patatnam in, uh, in India, okay. and uh, we're finding the labor to be exceptionally... You have a factory uh, in Pishaka Patram as well. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. It's actually, it's a... It's a, a, a a whole supply city, okay, and it's in uh, it's in partnership with uh, Brandix again from okay. uh, Sri Lanka. Um, in Sri Lanka, uh, where we had have had you know twenty five years worth of experience mm -hmm. uh, and uh, have put in a number of uh, both sportswear, uh, outerwear, and, uh, and and intimate apparel factories, uh, we see that prices are are going up. Uh, labor is becoming a little bit more difficult to. Uh, to get, uh, and it's a small country, you know, 20 million people. Yep. So, uh, uh, again, Bangladesh stands, uh, I think, a good position to uh, to be able to compete effectively with Sri Lanka. So you say Sri Lanka, in comparison with other countries like Bangladesh, is losing ground, uh, m losing their ground in the markets like the United States? <clears throat> they have a skill, I mean, that is rather uh, impressive. Uh, we know, for example, in, uh, in, in intimate apparel, they're they become really a, a, a universal center. People know in the retail world mm -hmm. that if you want really first class, uh, well done, intimate apparel, uh, Sri Lanka has the ability, as well as certain com companies there have also established equally good reputations in the sportswear side of things. So uh, Sri Lanka has come up, has done a good job of developing over the last, say, 25 years, okay. a reputation for good quality, uh, good ability to deal with fashion, uh, fairly fast and uh, compliant. You, you don't have much trouble uh, in terms of the working conditions and okay. people getting excited about uh, are they treating uh, their uh, workforce uh, properly. But I want your uh, honest observation about the Bangladesh situation like the labor standards, environmental standards and corporate social responsibility activities how you will evaluate the Bangladesh situation? I think that uh, from our standpoint, uh, we believe that 
corporate social responsibility is something we must comply with. And I say we must. Our, our best customers have extremely valuable brands, and we cannot afford to have uh, those brands attacked by any groups on the basis that we're not treating people properly. Okay. So if you went to see any of our factories in Sri Lanka, I think you'd come back you know, do suitably impressed because yeah. they're well done. Uh, they've maintained extremely good relations with the labor. Uh, they're very good at what they do, mm -hmm. and they've kept their customers mm -hmm. very satisfied for a long period of time. Okay, I, I read one of your interviews, and you said that diversity, global connections, and a smart workforce, capable leadership, an experienced middle management and women-friendly business environment is crucial for growing the sector steadily. How is the Bangladesh? I think not as far taking into all the all those issues into account. Uh, certainly capable uh, of understanding how to approach all of those issues, but. Uh, again, Bangladesh is not at it that long. I mean, your history in the apparel textile industry, mm -hmm. it doesn't go back decades uh, or multiple decades. Uh, so you're still learning on mm -hmm. how, to, uh, how to deal with uh, customers. The other thing to bear in mind is the customer base in, in Sri Lanka is pretty much at the moderate and premium level. Those customers who have these generally universally recognized brands, which are ex extremely valuable, cannot afford to be put in a position where they're not doing things that are, that, are so, that are corporately responsible socially. What are the challenges lie ahead for Bangladesh in the coming days? In I think one of the biggest will be the energy issue to solve that. I think the other will be your uh, infrastructure. Uh, getting around, getting fabric around, getting goods around, getting people around. You need obviously a lot of work uh, on your road systems. Uh, but, I, you know, I look at China, and when we went there, and our first, our first venture in China was 1978, uh, it was very difficult to get around. Yeah. Uh, today, I mean, you can drive 150 miles on a six-lane highway. So uh, we see that it's possible to, uh, to make progress. Uh, the, the issue is going to be, uh, does this government have the, uh, the will and the capital to make the kind of progress it needs to. And then can the, uh, can the industry move up the value chain so that the, the customers that they attract in the years to come will be requiring a more demanding uh, corporate social responsibility program? Where do you see Bangladesh uh, five years later from now on in the RMG sector or apparel and textile industry? I think five years from now, uh, you'll have advanced uh, considerably. I think that uh, uh, there's every indication you can grow your business, uh, you know, double digits uh, over the next, each year for the next five years. So you could get very close to doubling your, uh, uh, your output. Again, it's a function of will you have the infrastructure and will you have the energy to support a, a business that's growing that rapidly. What advice do you have for, the, for our young professionals? is willing to start their career in the apparel sector? I think uh, young, smart professionals, uh, the, like the ones that we think we, uh, we have found here to partner with, uh, are exceptionally uh, bright, uh, hardworking, and smart. And one thing I think I said uh, in the past is uh, I'd rather have smart labor than cheap labor. And uh, because smart labor really helps you to make the product that your customers need and to understand the needs of your customer. So, uh, you know, the, uh, the working relationship between the management and the labor, if both of them understand that the thing that drives an industry, that drives a company, is its connection to customers. If those customers are happy, if they're, if they're pleased with the progress, if they see that the the, the, the companies they're doing business with understand their brand and complies with what the brand needs, the, the future is very bright. Very bright. And the very last question is, how did you find the people, common people of Bangladesh? What is your experience? We've been delighted with uh, the people we've met here. Uh, they're gracious, they're hospitable, they're friendly. Uh, and I think they understand that there's opportunity in the country. Uh, clearly, they... Uh, 
they they all would like a chance to uh, to raise this, their standard of living, whether uh, you know whether it's for them or their families. I think they want their their kids to get a good education. They're doing all the th they're thinking about all the things I think uh, any country uh, would be would be proud to uh, to say is is important to them. So uh, we have no uh, no doubt that. Uh, uh, here, as in other places where we've uh, engaged in, uh, in joint ventures, uh, this country has a lot of upside potential. Thank you so much, Mr. David Montrust. You very much. Madam Trust, thank you so much. Thank you. Dear viewers, we thank you indeed for watching this program, and we welcome you to watch our next episode. Until then, to take care, and bye-bye.